Hello, welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is uh, focused on particulate matter monitoring and the mitigation strategies to limit COVID-19 airborne spread. My name is Ayan Karmakar and I'm the session moderator today. We are excited to have our esteemed panelists on board today. Mr. Janam Mehta, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Rizom. Dr. Srikant Sola, who's the CEO and co-founder at Devikar. Mr. Radha Narayan, who's the Head Sales at Devikar. I'll introduce each one of them as we proceed today. Before we begin this webinar, a couple of instructions. You are free to use the Q&A and the chat session where you can drop your queries or your suggestion feedback, whatever you would feel like as we go on in the webinar. We will try and answer maximum queries at the end. So guys, let's begin. We'll start with a little bit of intro about Oizong. I know today our audience could be more of our allies and we have known each other. But for the ones who have joined us for the first time, I wish to spare a few minutes to make them aware about our products and solutions. So to start off, I'll invite Mr. Janam Mehta as our first speaker. As I said, he's the Chief Marketing Officer at Wizong, who handles the global business. And uh, he believes that you know, data is the key to address the most complex issues in the world. So over to you, Janam. Thank you so much, Ayan. Thank you very much. Bonjour, hola, hello, namaste. Thank you everyone for joining us at the webinar today. So before we address the elephant in the room about coronavirus, I would like to take this time to quickly take you through what about a brief about Oizong and then probably we, later we can focus on our product offerings and solutions. Oizong is an environmental IoT company offering data-driven environmental solutions for better decision making. Using our sensor-based hardware, we monitor various environmental parameters related to air quality, noise, odor, weather, radiation, and several critical environmental parameters. Our data analytics platform enables you to visualize and access the data for actionable insights, which is very useful for authorities, communities, and industries. Keeping the environment as our core, we envision to empower industries to create highly scalable data for better decision making. With the mission to have environmental monitoring solutions in 50 major cities of by, by the end of 2020, this is the strong vision that the Oizom team works with. We meet the highest safety standards with all our products being CE, FCC, ROHS, SASO, and PTCRB certified. Oizom is a proud Make in India company where all our products are manufactured here in Ahmedabad in Gujarat. We have a very strong presence all across the globe with installations in some of the major cities across the world like Mumbai, Istanbul, Tokyo, London, Colombia, Lima, Peru, Sydney, and many more. Why did we start with air quality monitoring? Air quality kills three times more people than AIDS, malaria, and TB combined. Nine out of the 10 people who live on this earth, they're breathing polluted air. It might come as a shocking fact to several people, but living in a highly polluted city like Delhi is reducing four years of your lifespan. So the problem is pretty evident. And then why are we not doing anything to control it? I believe the biggest bottleneck here is data. To solve any complex problem, data is the key. But the present environmental monitoring solutions, they're expensive, complicated, and labor intensive, which leaves the market fragmented with no end-to-end -end solution available. And this is what motivated us to start Oizom. Oizom is a hardware software ecosystem that monitors up to 30 critical environmental parameters categorized into dust pollution, polluting gases, odorful and toxic gases, noise levels, radiation, and weather conditions. The data from this is then transferred to, transmitted through our various communication protocols to the Oizom IoT data platform, where it can be accessed in the form of actionable alerts, insightful reports, predictive analytics, and if the data needs to be dispersed to the mass, it can also be broadcasted in the form of an LED display, TVs, web apps, mobile apps, as well as the data can also be used in the form of APIs for industrial automation and process optimization. Most of, the, most of the gas parameters work on the, work on the principles of electrochemical sensing. Some critical parameters work on parameters like NDIR and a critical gases like VOCs work on the PID sensing technology. Oizom has a communication agnostic platform. So the data from the hardware can be transmitted 
to wireless communication models like GSM, Wi-Fi, LoRa, Sigfox, and wired communication models such as Modbus and Ethernet. A short video which will explain more about how the device works and how it functions. Here is a state-of-the-art environmental monitoring solution by Oizome. It's a compact, ultra-low-powered system which can work fully on solar power. It works continuously and sends various environmental data related to air pollution, odor, weather, noise and radiation. Its patent-pending e-breathing technology makes it highly accurate compared to industry standards. It can do complete gas analysis by monitoring pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfides, ozone, ammonia, hydrocarbons and many more. It counts every single particle present in the air sample using a highly accurate laser beam. It is capable of monitoring particulates of various sizes ranging from 1 micron to 100 microns. A downward-facing Class 1 noise sensor is ideally positioned to capture environmental noise up to 140 decibels from various sources. As you can observe, the top-mounted pyranometer does solar radiation analysis by diffracting the light rays into UV, IR and visible light spectrums. Most of the pollutants are invisible, but through systematic data collection they can be made visible. Boisome is committed to decipher hyperlocal environmental data. I believe the video has given you a quick brief about how the Oizome equipment works and how they function. One of the most important reasons why we have been able to be a pioneer in the environmental monitoring market in such a short span is because of our salient features of our products. The Oizome equipments offer near real-time data transfer all our equipments are 100% weatherproof, offering IP63 protection. They are theft resistant, tamper proof, can function fully on solar power, has eight various ways of data communication, and battery backup lasting up to 72 hours. We have four flagship hardware products that is the Oizone Polytron, which is an embedded air pollution monitoring system, Odosense, which focuses more on critical, odorful, and toxic gases, which is the ambient odor analyzer. Dustroid, which is focused on particulate matter and ambient dust monitor, and Weathercom, which is our automatic weather station. One of the key, one of the best things about Weathercom, rather, is that it can stand, it can be a standalone automatic weather station, but it can also be integrated into any of the existing three hardware products. All the data from them is sent to the Oizom IoT data platform, from where it can be accessed in the on, on our Oizom terminal for data visualization and analytics or you can do detailed modeling on top of it using the environmental data modeling platform, environmental AI. Oizum focuses on two major applications, that's urban applications and industrial applications. And in just a short span of four and a half years, we are present at more than 300 locations, monitoring the environmental health of 10 million people worldwide. Talking about our applications, the smart infra or the urban applications, we are majorly focusing on smart cities and campuses, smart airports, roadways and highways. Here, our key customers are usually system integrators and smart solution providers, making this application an entirely a B2B2B or a B2B2G application. When we talk about industrial applications, we work collectively with odor and dust mitigation companies for dust suppression at mines and ports, peripheral monitoring at solid waste management plants and wastewater treatment plants, as well as around industry. Here, the key customers are usually environmental solution providers and the end application is either a B2B2B or a B2B2G. From here, finally, we come to the main problem here, addressing the elephant in the room, the reason why all of you are here, discussing about coronavirus, COVID-19, and its airborne spread. So I believe, Ayan, you can lead this and talk more about the entire issue here. Thank you. Thank you, Ayan. I think uh, that was a great uh, intro to what we do and gives a nice idea about OISOM and uh, uh, our products and offerings in a brief manner. We'll speak about some more in the uh, in the coming sessions. I see people are uh, getting engaged and they have uh, given uh, some questions in the box. I encourage you all to drop your questions. So once we are thorough with our webinar, we'll be more than happy to answer these things. So coming back to uh, our webinar and uh, now that we are talking about uh, coronavirus, I'm sure you have a pretty fair idea about how the sensor-based technology is used for monitoring environmental conditions. 
But when it comes to monitoring air pollution, uh, in the current scenario, there has been an interesting observation, which is regarding the COVID-19 spread. So before we proceed to all those correlations, let us understand that what we know so far about this deadly virus. I know this has been months and now by now we have had so much of information about this. We have, uh, we have seen how uh, the COVID-19 has, has impacted our daily lives, be it the mortality rate, the lack of testing areas or hospitals, the infrastructure or the effects of lockdown on the economy. We are, we are very much informed uh, by every news uh, article that we have gone through so far on this COVID-19 scenario. Uh, to begin, uh, I would I also always like to see the positive side and so you know not all is gloomy when it comes to the after effects of these pandemic. So as far as the air pollution is concerned, there has been few uh, positives that have been that have surfaced during these hard times. So a noticeable impact uh, in the air pollution has been observed by scientists across the world. Uh, as we mentioned in the introductory slides, you may recall that the number of people who are dying due to poor air quality, that's quite high. But as a blessing in disguise, uh, the COVID-19 containment strategies which have involved travel bans, which have involved uh, mass gatherings, a uh, ban of mass gatherings. So those have resulted into the reduction of air pollution, which has eventually uh, reduced the number of deaths. In fact, uh, as in the pre preliminary stages, we found out that China alone has uh, you know, they've saved around 77 lives as a result of this. That's, this is very preliminary data that we could correlate to. So what do we know about uh, this virus? So the size is around say 0.1 microns, which is way less than the particulate matter in the form of PM1, 2.5 or 10. So this indicates that this can easily penetrate through the mass, which is maybe PM2.5 mass or something like that. So just imagine what I'm trying to say is that if the coronavirus would have been airborne, what kind of catastrophic damage it would have created, right? So while you are imagining all those scenarios, what I'm trying to say, I'll say that just uh, put a hold on that and we capture some more data and then I'll ask you later to you know, work on that part. You see, this is what the whole uh, condition looks like. You, we know that COVID-19 spreads mainly by droplets produced as a result of uh, coughing or sneezing and maybe from uh, direct or indirect contact. The incubation period is around one to 14 days. Uh, there are some asymptomatic patients also, whereas there are some uh, patients with serious symptoms. Uh, we also know the prevention techniques which uh, talk about social distancing and we ensure that you know, we take care of personal hygiene. Despite all that, you see the statistics right now and it, it says that over 9 million people have been affected with this over, uh, over the whole globe. Uh, more than 4.8 lakh deaths which has caused by the sim uh, single pandemic. Uh, you know, all this gives a very grave situation overall. So this is a, a documentary that one of the research bodies have been working upon. There are several bodies which are working towards it. This showcases uh, how NHK Japan is working with uh, laser beams and high sensitivity cameras and they are detecting 0.1 microns. So in, in the picture, you can see that a person is sneezing and they have tried to get a capture rate of how uh, the, the micro droplets are spreading in the air. So small and light particles, they drift through the air even while you're sneezing or maybe if you are, you know, talking loudly uh, somewhere, you know, in a room with uh, two people or maybe more than that. So further, some researchers have worked on certain simulations. So this uh, gives an idea of the movement of micro droplets uh, where people, around 10 people are in, the, in a small room. Have a look at the timer, which is at the bottom of the screen, which showcases this, uh, the time for which the lighter particles take to stay in the air, whereas the heavier particles will gradually move down uh, on the surface. So this, this gives a, a very, very good indication of uh, how the, uh, these particles stay indefinitely in the, the lighter particles that I'm trying to say. So maybe wind circulation through ventilation by just opening the windows could help around in a small contained room or uh, that can you know, uh, ensure that the micro droplets uh, do not uh, stay in the air. So such kind of studies have been uh, happening around the world and researchers are working towards that. So similar such studies uh, where the human expired aerosols are uh, there in the form of these droplets and are resulted from human activities like coughing, breathing or just maybe even talking as we just saw. There are studies which have suggested that such aerosols are found in hospitals where COVID-19 patients are admitted and these aerosols, they remain on the surfaces for hours before they finally fall on the floor. But such aerosols are heavier and take less time to deposit. So a uh, study says that a particle with uh, diameter one to three microns were found uh, to be suspended for almost indefinitely, whereas the heavier particles like 100 microns, they fell on the floor in just uh, say 10 seconds. So what do we understand from all this? 
limited sampling results in medical and laboratory settings have identified that this virus uh, in aerosol form that lingers in the air and has been reported to travel intra building or over long distance from the source so this uh, animation you know it gives a clear idea of how the smaller virus uh, can spread on in, as an airborne disease when they uh, deposit themselves over have particle sizes like 2.5 or 10 so such correlations uh, in the us uh, has been uh, you know studied and they have correlated long term exposure and mortality rates let me give an example so howard university has uh, come up with a research where with an increase in pm 2.5 values by just 1 microgram per cubic meter that led to 7% increase in deaths yes earlier that uh, the figure was 15% but later on they worked on it and they found out that it was a 7% increase in death because of just rise in uh, 1 micrograms per cubic meter so you can understand how great the whole situation is uh we discussed uh, the death rate uh, it's just simple mathematics to gauge you know what could be the effect once you know this kind of statistics another such studies in italy they have found out correlation between high mortality rates and pollution hotspots so taking that as a cofactor some of the studies have also uh, found pm10 and its role uh one study in london has found out that the exposure of no2 on ozone for a long time has led to persistent inflammatory da damage and increases the risk of this virus infection since this virus attacks the respiratory tract so such kind of a uh, uh, long exposure to polluted areas you know that has given uh, that has make, made people more prone to these attacks so again from this what do we understand there is a clear evidence to back the fact that the virus can be spread by particulate matter in fact these correlations have been identified with seek more stress on identifying pollution hotspots no also the uh, data connection where pollution and health related diseases seem to be a vital uh, situation or a vital factor in identifying such hotspots now i would ask you to go back a few minutes recall how i asked you to you know hold your imagination with the spread and all now you have this information in front of you this is what the research says this is what people have been working towards now i will ask you to you know uh, unlock that imagination and now you think of what could be the effects if something like this is actually present and we are not aware of it right so this time include this particulate matter factor into your uh, you know virus spread and imagine how grave the situation would be several kind of research uh, such kind of researches have been uh, you know carried out uh, the findings may be preliminary by now there have been certain uh, very much definite uh, findings which have left us uh, the question of its of this detrimental impact uh, all said and done uh, all these findings all these researches all these uh, studies that we are trying to link and we are trying to explain you may ask that you know what's the next thing like uh, you were telling about the the studies but how do we do it in actual life how do we put all these things in practice so how do we track or identify these hotspots is there a mechanism so to answer that that i'll just ask your prime attention for the couple of slides after this which will help you uh, understand what i'm trying to say this is a uh, this is a map uh, it's the environmental ai uh, which is a street by street uh, pollution mapping and source detection platform for cities now map is always a good medium to understand a region uh, specific or any matter be it a pollution or a virus factor so here we have combined this uh, pollution map and superimposed it with uh, the spread of uh, covid-19 so this when further correlated with upwind and downwind data that will help understand a possible spread over the specific region in this case uh, this is a hotspot in a city we now have we have so much of data where you can identify these hotspots based on the uh, data that the who is giving or maybe your city administrator is giving so this gives you a holistic view of what is happening so this is what uh, our uh, one of the offerings is are for environmental.ai and we are trying to correlate with that with covid-19 but in actual uh, situations how how do we do that so we place our air monitoring network uh, in the city and uh, on the top of the real time pollution data we also integrate the secondary data sources like satellite meteorological traffic and pollution sources inventory so there after we perform a dispersion modeling at a city scale every single hour now the heat map shown is of delhi where around 6.5 lakh data points are predicted every single hour and a higher resolution that's a 100 by 100 meter pollution map is produced real time so normally such kind of maps are an output of source apportionment studies which use historical data but this is kind of a real time solution which will help you understand and uh, we are talking about endless possibilities with such execution 
at this moment i would also ask you to keep jotting down your questions for us in case if this uh, this uh, you you find this interesting and we have certain queries to be answered so based on all this data we we always want things to be quantified right uh, we it even for aqi we are trying to uh, quantify the air quality index so it gives me immense pleasure to share with you guys that we are developing this for quite some time so including a holistic view we have come up with an index which provides actionable insights to the stakeholders you know despite corona uh, being a non airborne disease uh, the effects through particulates you know needs to be quantified so this uh, airborne covid spread index which uh, includes factors like particulate matters wind speed direction uh, covid 19 positive cases or historical air pollution data so all this combined we are trying to frame that we have moved forward uh, even in the previous webinar we just found that something like this uh, could be a, a gem for all of us so we have moved forward from that we are open for collaboration we are working with a few research bodies to this and we are you know we are trying to focus on how we can improve this uh, overall so uh, the hotspots uh, we, we spoke about you know the the problem we spoke about how the solution can be done using such math but quickly i would uh, invite jainam again on stage to uh, help us understand that what could be the methods or what are the instruments that can be used to understand uh, you know to get the measurement of these data and then using that data we will you know use uh, and generate such maps so jainam if you would please help us understand uh, our product offerings in this thank you so much and once again so before we as i and rightly mentioned you know before trying to understand and getting to the root of the problem it is very important to have the data and i think the what follows my slides would be more focused on the mitigation strategies so i'll quickly take you through what all the product offerings are and how we are trying to and capture environmental data as much as possible starting with polytron polytron is our ambient air quality monitoring solution this measures all the important aqi parameters they like pm 2.5 pm 10 polluting gases like co2 so2 no no2 co o3 as well as environmental parameters like ambient light in the form of uv and light intensity noise monitoring and environmental parameters like temperature humidity and barometric pressure this is an ideal solution for large places or like smart cities campus monitoring roadways and tunnels and airports quickly moving to our odor mo uh, dust monitoring solution the dustroid dustroid is primarily focused on particulate matter monitoring it monitors particulate matter ranging from 1 micron to 100 microns that's pm1 pm2.5 pm10 and pm100 dustroid is usually used collectively with dust suppression or for process optimization in places like construction sites mines and quarries seaports and every other heavy dust laden activity we usually work quite a lot with dust mitigation companies and as well as dust suppression companies like the fogging and misting can and companies to see how they can improve their processes reduce the reduce the cost of water or the mitigation processes energy resources and improve the efficiency odor sense is our odor odor monitoring solution that measures all the toxic and odorful gases like ammonia methane hydrocarbons smog captains vocs in the form of btx and formaldehyde as well as toxic gases like carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide we also tend to add uh, environmental and meteorological parameters along with it to identify the exact source odor emission tracking in the form of from in, in the form of pollution dose charts from the exact source this is an ideal solution for peripheral monitoring across heavily for polluting and odorful places like wastewater treatment plants landfills in india dump yards industries and contaminated soil treatment plants weathercom our automatic weather station can also be integrated with all our existing solutions as i previously mentioned to identify a larger picture but also it can work as an independent weather monitoring system to capture meteorological parameters like wind speed direction rainfall ambient light temperature humidity barometric pressure additionally you can also add critical parameters based on the application like flood monitoring road surface temperature for highways etc so the key use cases for this is usually three major things that is agricultural monitoring where you add soil humidity sensors to identify what is the conditions of the soil and what is the weather conditions how can you improve your irrigation processes if any immediate disaster warning before any natural calamity hit because in most of the disaster there is always a sudden a small spike before the larger disaster happens so through effective monitoring we can actually identify that road safety for generating dynamic top speed limits 
and as well as airports and seaports to see how much pollution is being caused there. But also additional with the weather stations, you can also identify and change the processes, maybe the schedule of the flights or the direction of the runways, all this can be done based on the weather parameters. Once we have acquired the data, there are various ways to access this data and visualize it and analyze it. The OISOM data platform offers customizable dashboard, real-time data analytics through various, uh, through various correlations. You can generate and trigger smart notifications in the form of an email, SMS, or a push notification, where when a trigger is set and it crosses it, there's a, there's a notification and an alert generated. Automated reports in the form of daily, monthly, or weekly reports that you want. In case the data needs to be shown on a third party portal, we also have environmental widgets that can be embedded into the existing websites. And of course, the pollution heat map, which I think we briefly spoke about earlier. Similarly, this data can also be accessed through various platforms, not just limited to OISM data platform, but if there is a third party app that's already there and they want to integrate the data, they can access it through HTTP and MQTT based APIs. The data can be uh, integrated directly into smart TVs and LEDs where it can be showcased to showcase the data to the mass. Web widgets, smart notifications, print ready reports, which can be easily printed for better documentation, the mobile app, and we are working on this really interesting one, and I, I've mentioned this every time, is the voice activation, which I'm very excited about, that the moment the pollution crosses the threshold, maybe Alexa will tell you that, hey, the air quality is really bad. Do you want me to turn on the air purifier? So this is one of the ideas that we are working on and hopefully make, going to make it live soon. So I think enough said and done about pollution monitoring and monitoring capabilities. Ayan, probably you would want to take this further on and where we can focus on the mitigation strategies and how we can take that forward. Over yes. to you, Ayan. Thank you. Thank you, Jainam, for this quick uh, brief about the products and the offerings. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have spoken about uh, the spread of the virus. We've spoken about uh, the hotspots and we've spoken about how we can generate uh, using that data. Now, it's my pleasure to invite our next panelist who is going to talk about the mitigation strategies of uh, particulate matter. Uh, I have uh, on board today with me uh, Dr. Shrikant Sola to introduce him. He is uh, the CEO and uh, co founder of Davic Earth, and he's a US trained cardiologist and has developed award winning pulse wave technology. He has authored more than 40 scientific uh, articles in peer reviewed journals. To talk more about Devikert, uh, the methods, the, the strategies that are used for uh, mitigating the effects of or mitigating the particulate matter, I hand over uh, the session to our panelist, Dr. Shrikant Sola. Uh, Dr. Sola, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you to the organizers for having me. So what I will do in the next 10 minutes is I will briefly talk about different ways to mitigate uh, particle pollution or particulate pollution, especially PM10 and 2.5. But first, let me just take you abroad, uh, actually to the moon. This is a project we've been working on, David Kurth has been working on with NASA since uh, late last year, October of last year, looking at how we can mitigate dust on the moon. And uh, what we've learned is that when spacecraft land on the surface of the moon, they tend to kick up a lot of dust. And this is basically the remnants of old meteors that have hit ages ago. They're highly abrasive and electrically charged. And because of the microgravity environment on the moon, it's just one sixth the gravity of the Earth. These dust particles tend to stay suspended. And as they orbit around the surface of the moon, they can damage sensitive instruments and cause erroneous readings. Now, Coming back to Earth, that's a lot of fun, but coming back to Earth and what happens here, when we talk about pollution mitigation strategies, we need to look at what happens in nature and how does nature mitigate pollution? Because many of the things, at least some of the things that we do to mitigate uh, pollution in the air actually mimic what happens in nature. So there's two uh, key ways that nature does this. The first is dry deposition and the other is wet deposition. I'll go through these uh, in the next few moments. So in dry deposition, what happens is you have small uh, particle pollutants, let's say PM10, PM2.5, PM50, 100, whatever, various size dust particles. And these are moving, usually in random motion at various velocities. They may be blown around by the wind. PM 2.5, as we know, can travel hundreds or even thousands of kilometers across the surface of the Earth to different parts of the globe. But what happens is eventually they collide with each other and they agglomerate. And as they agglomerate, they gain increased mass and then they settle to the surface of the Earth, whatever is below them. 
this dry deposition process is responsible for clearing two thirds of all of the particulate pollution in the air and it's very important. Now we see it all the time. So for example, if you don't wash your car, two things will happen. First is you'll get a layer of dust on your car, right? All of us have had this experience. And then the second thing is that some punk will come and make a joke on your dirty windscreens. Yes, so this has happened to all of us. And uh, this is dry deposition. If you don't uh, wipe your table, if you don't dust your table, you'll see a layer of dust after a while. That's dry deposition. And this can be utilized to help clear pollution. The other way is wet deposition. And in this process, what happens is raindrops pass through the air. It could be snow, it could also be fog. And as they settle to the surface of the earth, they collide with the particle pollutants that are in the atmosphere and push them to the surface. And most uh, particle pollutants, not all, but most of them are, uh, are, are neutralized or cleared once they hit the atmosphere. We're dealing with particle pollutants that are in the parts per million range, sometimes parts per billion range, so they're not very concentrated when they do hit the earth. Now, how does that then apply to common applications for controlling air pollution, right? Whether it's in industries, uh, indoor spaces such as factories, uh, again, ambient or rather indoor air quality inside offices or around those offices, or office parks, and of course in cities. Let's focus on the first three and let's discuss some of the common ways to remove pollution. Let's start with industries first. So this is a particular example. I'm not going to go through the details in this talk, but basically what I want you to understand, and let's look at this example of a gravitational settling chamber. This is often used as a pre-filter for more high efficiency collectors, but basically you have some kind of box container you have your dirty polluted gas coming in. The, uh, some application is applied to reduce the particle pollutant load and then cleaner air or clean air comes out the other side. So this would be attached to your stack, your flue gas that is coming from whatever processes, let's say the burning of coal for generation of coal thermal power. And then you have some kind of collection system at the bottom where this dust is collected and has to be removed. So there are a couple of ways that are common. You have cyclone separators, which use centrifugal force. You have electrostat static precipitators or ESPs in which air comes through and electrical charge is applied to these plates and that causes the electrical particles to collect together, sorry, the charged dust particles to collect together and settle out. You have fabric filter bag houses, which are just bags of fabric hung suspended from the ceiling and air is forced up through these bags and then through the other side and then dust is trapped here. And of course, as you can imagine, the bags have to be cleaned from time to time. And then finally, you have scrubbers or sometimes called wet collectors where particulate pollutants are mixed with water and removed from the gas stream that comes from your flue gas, and then it's collected. This is kind of like uh, wet deposition happening inside a big machine to collect this particle pollutants. Now, what kind of particle or what kind of air pollution control equipment you would want to remove the particulate load from your flue gas, from your stacks, depends on several things. The flow characteristics of that gas, the carrier gas that those particle pollutants are coming through, the types of contaminants and their specific properties, how big or what, how small those particles are, anywhere from 0.1 to 100 microns in diameter, uh, the loading am amount or how much you have and what type of efficiency is required, especially based on state or national laws. There are, of course, cost uh, considerations. These equipment can be quite expensive, especially the electrostatic precipitators. Um, filters work great, but they require a lot of maintenance. And the cheapest are the cyclones. And they all work in different areas and can, can be combined. Keep in mind that ESPs have been upregulated recently, at least from a legal perspective. And many uh, industries are now required to upgrade many of these. And that's leading to additional compliance issues as well as monitoring requirements. Now, that is what comes out of your stack, right? But there is another source of emissions that industries also have to control, which is really important. And this is called fugitive emissions. Imagine that this bulldozer is digging up dirt a lot of dust will be created and that can affect crops nearby. It can affect uh, communities nearby. And the same thing when these heavy vehicles pass over, uh, over roads that have uh, dust on top of them, you can get resuspension of that road dust. So you have to have various industrial hygiene practices to control this 
these fugitive emissions. It can be uh, covering materials during storage and transport, or in this case of a coal yard where coal is being dumped for just before it gets taken into your uh, crusher, it's being sprayed with water to keep down the amount of dust. Now that's ambient air in industries where it can, uh, you have a lot of pollution, but typically over uh, compounds that are 30, 50, hundreds, or even hundreds of acres in size. Now you come indoors to factories where you also have very heavily polluting industrial and manufacturing processes, which can create very high amounts of pollution. In fact, when we had uh, collaborated and installed one of our Pure Skies equipment inside a factory, uh, we found that pollution levels for PM10 and 2.5 were way over 1,200. That's like three or four or five times worse than Delhi, even on a bad day. And Oizum was able to give us a custom-made monitor for that requirement. Now, let me just focus on one process, welding as an example of what can be done. So welding is one of the dirtiest processes inside factories. You have release of to toxic gases, harmful gases, which contain high concentrations of particle pollutants, oftentimes along with various other metal compounds, depending on what type of welding wire is being used. So you can see these fumes going up, and if there's no proper applications or, or equipment in place, they can drift over the entire facility, affecting everyone on the plant floor. There are measurement devices to understand how much the worker is being exposed to. There are ways to help position the worker as far away from the weld of smoke, but still it affects everyone. So you need to do two things in this case. One is you need local source extraction with fume extractors. You can get mobile ones like this. You can get uh, ones that are fixed to the wall and they need to empty into some kind of dust collecting system. Here I would recommend, please, please, please do not buy the cheap, low cost Chinese fume extractors. This has nothing to do with what is happening on the India-China border. It's just that when we see these, we know that they are not going to work. Um, the Indian make ones are actually far superior in quality. You have local source extraction with fume extractors, and then you have facility-wide pollution reduction, and you can use technologies like ours, Pure Skies, which controls pollution levels across the entire factory, but you need both for welding. Okay, and finally, let's end with looking at offices. Um, most of us are either working from offices or perhaps wishing we could go back to our office. This is an example of a COVID or post lockdown office where you can see that people are now sitting in a social distancing type of setup. And there are several ways to affect this also. The first is HVAC systems. And I'm sorry that this is an old picture, but you know, these things have been around for a while. Basically inside your central ducting, if you go back here, you can see that this office has an HVAC. So you have return ducts and you have your fresh air ducts. And what happens is the uh, old air, which contains odors, mold, bacteria, whatever, goes into this and it passes through some type of filtration system. It could be ESPs, it could be fabric filters, or some other type of paper filter. And then the cleaned air comes out here. The problem is if you know there's a lot of this uh, copy paste technology out of there and it, the quality of the HVAC systems may not be so good, even amongst the best designs. And so we see a lot of problems with pressure drop, which means that you have less airflow in the areas downstream from your filter. And so these areas can heat up quite a bit during the summer months. We also see that some people, uh, the, the increased um, load on these systems can cause, cause damage to your pumps. And we do see that some people are advertising these uh, UV lamps, which are supposed to kill viruses and bacteria. This works great for water, but it's lousy for air. So don't fall for UV treatment for air. This is an ESP type system for HVACs. Um, these work well, but they're quite costly, two and a half lakhs for 500 square feet, depending on the system used. And ESP chatter, which is the noise that the dust makes when it gets collected can cause disturbance in some settings. It sounds like, you know, when your car goes over a sand and the sand gets in the wheel well and makes some noise, it sounds like that. So these don't work very well for areas where the guest experience is very important, such as hotels and cinema halls. And some of these can create indoor ozone, which is quite problematic. The last two solutions are, of course, air purifiers. Everybody um, uh, has these or has seen these. These are great for particle pollutants, but they don't cover very large areas. And they're noisy at high speeds, which means that people uh, usually reduce the fan speed 
be because of the noise, which means they cover an even smaller area. So you need many of these to cover an office and the efficiency reduces with time as the filters get clogged up. Pure Skies is pulse radio wave technology, and I'll let our next speaker talk about this, but this is an effective and low cost solution compared to the others. I do wanna mention two problems that you should be aware of, and this is something we have seen a lot. The first is poorly designed fresh air treatment units. This is what they look like. They bring in fresh air. They're supposed to filter them and then bring that fresh air into the system, oftentimes with some kind of heat or, or exchange. But what happens is many of these are very poorly designed and when you turn on this fresh air treatment unit, the air quality level actually gets worse inside the building. So please pay attention to this. And then one final point is that it doesn't matter how posh your hotel or your building is. If you have polluted air at the entrance to your lobby, even if you have 100 air purifiers inside, that dirty air is going to come right inside your lobby and then spread to other areas inside your building. We have gotten around this by simply placing one of our Pure Skies extender units in the lobby so that the air that does come in via the lobby is actually clean treated air. And everyone's favorite is plants. They have a great feel good factor, but just to remember that you need a large amount of plants to make a difference in indoor air quality. So to summarize, when it comes to air pollution control equipment, either indoors or outdoors, we have a wide variety of choices. And when you're looking at these, first pay attention to industrial hygiene. What are you already doing? And if you're doing air quality monitoring, what is your customer doing? Second, look at the engineering and process controls. And then finally, you can select the right technology for that particular application. So thank you very much. And Ian, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sola. This was indeed uh, a great uh, knowledge uh, shared by you about the, the real-time scenarios that we are trying to explore. And as rightly mentioned, uh, we have combined our efforts together to work on a few uh, solutions as, as for the workshop that was men mentioned where even we were surprised how the particle matter levels were so high. So to speak more about uh, the technologies and the offerings of uh, Devitur, I invite our next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Radha Narayan. Uh, Mr. Radha uh, is the sales head at uh, Devitur and he has an experience in technical uh, enterprise sales as well as marketing for over six years now. So I invite you, uh, Mr. Radha, over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ayan. Uh, good evening, everyone, and hope you all are doing great. Uh, it's my pleasure to be speaking to all of you today. Um, when it comes to air quality management, it's critical that we first understand what are all the fragments of the problem for us to be able to address it in a comprehensive manner. And for us to be able to uh, look at it that way, we first look at what are the various sources of the pollution. And, when, and I'm sure uh, you might have seen what Dr. Sol had mentioned, the various uh, source level mitigation uh, solutions that are available in the market. And then also the next thing or the major challenge is the fugitive emissions. So this gives a whole different uh, problem set to the people who are trying to manage the whole facility. So this calls for facility wide solutions that can help mitigate fugitive emissions, thus ensuring good air quality across the facility. So let's take the example of a typical shop floor or a plant. They generally have uh, pollution sources within the uh, facility as well as outside the facility. So in case, uh, if you see here, the, the circles one, two, and three, uh, they show you the internal sources of pollution and uh, the one and two outside uh, the lines are the external sources of pollution. So if you see there, uh, this, these are the various uh, you know, sources that can cause a lot of uh, problem within the facility. And as Dr. Solad mentioned, you can have source level mitigation for some of the internal ones, but unfortunately that doesn't suffice and you end up with having a lot of fugitive emissions to deal with. So let's look at uh, a next step that can be taken is to have air quality monitoring. So that's the first step in trying to address the problem and you install the monitors and it shows you that, you know, the air quality is so much or, you know, uh, with having concentrations of PM 2.5, PM 10, et cetera, in such a manner. So at this point, we have now successfully diagnosed the problem and let's look at how we can address or treat the whole problem. So we all are aware of the big problem that air pollution is posing. 
and uh, it's a, it's affecting one in uh, I mean nine out of ten people across the world, causing several millions of uh, deaths and also impacting a lot of lives to you know in terms of asthma and other problems. So taking the inspiration uh, from the nature, like or like what Dr. Sola had mentioned, uh, wet deposition and dry deposition. So dry deposition, as you mentioned, is where uh, particles that are floating in there coagulate and uh, settle down due to their weight. Uh, pure skies is something different from what uh, we most of, most of us would have heard. So we all understand uh, how you know there are umpteen solutions such as filters, ESPs, HVACs, uh, that do a great job at reducing pollution, but they're only limited to the air that can pass through them. And uh, this poses a major challenge in terms of scaling the solution across a facility. So with over 12 years of R&D, uh, Dr. Sola has designed and developed an advanced pollution mitigation technology that uses pulsed Wi-Fi to accelerate the natural clearance of these airborne pollutants. And it works in coordination with a monitor such as the Oizom Polydrone, as you can see here, these two components. And now going back to the uh, problem that we were discussing about, about the shop floor, uh, to the whole system, if we add pure skies into it. So if you see the blue circles here, they indicate the pure sky systems. The center one here is the pure sky base station. And the smaller blue circles towards the corners are the extender units to ensure complete coverage across the facility. So now that we have this, uh, what happens is this works in tandem with the monitoring solution and helps you mitigate these pollution, uh, pollutant particles that are floating in the air across the facility. So these circles are representative of how the uh, pulsed Wi-Fi goes across the facility to ensure a complete clean area for the across the facility. So let's, I'll also deal uh, with this in more detail, uh, taking uh, use cases from real life scenarios. So this similar thing can be applied because the system is using a pulsed Wi-Fi based uh, technology. It can be applied for outdoor uh, requirements as well. So in this case, if you're looking at a, a place which is larger than about uh, you know several meters, uh, up to one kilometer in radius, uh, we deploy uh, the monitoring systems and then we also deploy the purification systems, base station and extenders to give you complete coverage across the required uh, facility. And then they work uh, in parallel uh, to ensure clean air across the facility. So this is broadly an overview of, of the kind of technology that is uh, now developed and it's, you know, it's an advanced technology that can help mitigate pollution across large areas, especially pe for people dealing with uh, fugitive emissions. And then because it's using a Wi-Fi based system, it's like your Wi-Fi to imagine, uh, you know, you don't have the barriers of uh, things like uh, walls or this thing, which, uh, you know, your regular filters or air purifiers cannot go beyond. So it works like a Wi-Fi which can cover the entire facility with just a couple of uh, units. And all in all, it gives a true value proposition to the end users uh, by helping you improve operational efficiency. And uh, it also helps you uh, ensure sustainability in the long run and also cost savings in terms of uh, regulatory penalties, lower power consumption, lower operating costs, et cetera. All in all, it, it, it helps you augment your bottom line and uh, gives, helps you save a lot of expenditure that you might otherwise have had to incur. So now coming to uh, certain, uh, some of the real life cases that we have seen, uh, here's an example of a manufacturing facility uh, based in Pune, where we had deployed uh, the Oizom Polytron system to monitor the air quality. So the red area that, show, that is shown here uh, towards the left, uh, is the time that uh, is the uh, is the time where we were observing what were the baseline levels of the air quality, and the le the levels were roughly around 400 plus and peaking up to almost 800 to 1,000 microgram per meter cube, and it was similar for uh, PM10 as well, significantly high. Uh, they already had invested significant amount in uh, fume extractors. And although uh, they are great, like I said, you know, but they end up having the problem of fugitive emissions. And that is where our system, once it was deployed, the green area, which is depicted here, is the time when the pure sky system was running. And if you see over the time, the first few weeks, uh, we see an improvement of about uh, 15 to 20% in the air quality levels. And then on, it's a continuous improvement, significant improvement of about 70 to 80%. 
and as of today uh, it's been over a year since the unit was installed and it's been running there and the air quality levels are better by about 95 percent compared to the baseline which we observed initially another installation and a use case from a thermal power plant uh, this is again uh, where the uh, facility had their own uh, BAM monitor, reference monitor to monitor the air quality. Again, we had deployed uh, an OISOM uh, polydrone monitor to monitor the air quality levels, which provide the feedback for the pure sky system to function. And then we have done it over multiple seasons. That's the reason why you see a period one and a period two. And here you see that the initial uh, period, we saw that the air quality levels uh, improved by about 47% for PM 2.5 and 36% for PM 10 with the system. And then post that, uh, there was a short period of uh, Western disturbances that actually had caused the uh, pollution levels to significantly come down. In spite of the pollution levels coming down, post the Western disturbances, uh, our system again was uh, deployed to understand how it can help mitigate from a lower level of a baseline as well. And we see again a further 50% decline in PM 2.5 levels and a 37% decline in the PM 10 levels. So this is what has happened, uh, what we have observed in uh, a thermal power plant. So I'd like to draw your attention to a key feature of the Pure Sky system that uh, we have confirmed from our experience across multiple terrains and industries over the last couple of years. We see that there's an incremental improvement in the air quality over time across installations, regardless of the type of uh, facility or industry or a location, giving Pure Skies the rare distinction of being a smart AI-driven solution for pollution mitigation versus any other technology that's currently available uh, in the market. So this brings uh, me to the end of my talk. Uh, thank you, everyone, and over to you, Ayan. Thank you so much, Radha. Uh, I think that was really insightful uh, from Devikard uh, with both the uh, presentations by Dr. Sola as well as Radha, who has given us a good intro of how things work and how we can you know, use technologies to mitigate the spread of uh, uh, the particulate matters. So this brings an end to this webinar. Uh, but before we pro move towards uh, thanking our participants and as well as the panelists, I would now take a few questions. So, uh, okay, there are certain questions which I'll uh, have a look and then uh, assign uh, the panelists to answer. Uh, I have uh, uh, Mr. Virendra who's asking that why 2.5 and 10 measurement is not mentioned. Uh, it is actually mentioned. We tried to showcase a video with a particulate matter uh, uh, measurement in itself. So our we have the technology to measure 2.5, 10, uh, and even PM100 as well as PM1. So all those uh, possibilities are there. Uh, Mr. Rohit is asking, do uh, you have any monitoring system which cover 0.1 micron size? Uh, no, uh, 0.1 micron size, uh, we do not have uh, a feature to monitor that. Uh, currently, we are trying to you know, focus on uh, the 2.5-10 where and gradually PM1 is uh, uh, coming up in the market, but 0.1 is, I think, uh, way into the future and there will be technologies soon to do that. Uh, which one out of 2.5 and 10 is having more affinity to coronavirus. So as we said, uh, as for the studies, uh, it's more of 2.5 that uh, people have researched and that's where they have tried to uh, correlate between 2.5 as well as uh, the spread of uh, coronavirus. Uh, these are questions related to the first part, so I'm answering these. Uh, in a slide showing Delhi map to show how PM 2.5 correlate with COVID-19 did your data analytics include population density in the region? Yes. Uh, we do we do uh, ensure that uh, the population density is a factor with when it comes to take care of uh, the whole uh, hotspot or when we uh, talk about a holistic view of uh, the uh, the heat map generation. So yes, uh, there is a question, but uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Sola, uh, you can answer this. It's a very generic question, but it says that what will be the air changes for us? I'm not uh, sure as to which uh, specific part uh, the gentleman is asking. Any general reference to which uh, you can answer this, Dr. Sola? I have some noise from my mic. Uh, Radha, could you answer this? The answer is, uh, yeah, just tell about how it works. Yeah, sure. So uh, in terms of air exchanges, that is applicable for air handling units or total fresh air uh, units that bring in fresh air from the external sources to the internal sources. So uh, in terms of pure skies and the technology that we are having, 
there is no requirement for air exchange to happen. Uh, ours, uh, in that specific case, our system doesn't bring the air from a certain area into the system to purify it. Rather, it makes the pollutants wherever they are to coagulate and settle down. As was the example presented by Dr. Sola uh, regarding the car and the dust on uh, settling on the car, it's the same use case. I hope uh, that answers the question. Yeah. Uh, so there is another uh, few questions. Uh, is it safe for offices to use a centralized air conditioning system in current time of COVID? Uh, Radha or Dr. Solai? Sure. Yeah. Radha, you can answer this. Yeah, sure. So uh, centralized air conditioning systems in the times of COVID uh, is generally a big no. Uh, reason being that it's best to avoid uh, or rather I would say prevent. It's best to prevent rather than cure. So centralized air condition units need to be taken care in a very uh, stringent way to ensure that there's no spread of COVID. And in, in most cases, it happens that there could be laxities uh, when there are a lot of people involved. So in fact, even for our office in Devikarth, uh, we, are, we are switching to uh, regular ventilation through windows, opening windows, and also switching to pedestal fans to avoid uh, the use of uh, ACs. And uh, also that gives a safe feeling for the employees uh, present in the office. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, we have uh, time for one more question, uh, which is uh, to Mr. Radha. I think the gentleman has asked, uh, sure. do you have any use case for five-star hotels and office buildings with central air conditioning? Yes, we do. So in fact, uh, our first installation was, was at an office uh, space in Bangalore. Uh, it's about uh, 5,000 square feet. Uh, we have installed one unit there. And uh, they are close to the main road. So they, and again, thanks to being in Bangalore, their air quality wasn't too bad. It was about uh, 50 or 60 microgram per meter cube. And uh, over the uh, installation of the unit, uh, it's been about uh, uh, three or four months till the time that the air quality improved by about 70%. And uh, now it's been about a year and the air quality is better by about uh, 80%. So their typical levels are around five or six microgram per meter cube in their office. Another example is from a five-star hotel uh, in Delhi. Again, you can imagine the air quality levels there outdoor are significantly bad. So unfortunately, whatever they try to use, be it ESPs, be it AHUs, TFAs, anything, uh, they just really are unable to handle the problem of air pollution. And uh, this specific company had spent several crores to try to handle it, but unfortunately it didn't help. And uh, that's when we have installed our unit there, uh, I think last December. And uh, within uh, about a month or two, the levels improved by about 60%. And uh, they're significantly happy with the results that they, that they have seen in the facility. So uh, one last question is uh, how you have generated the heat map for air quality and COVID-19. So as we said, we have our platform uh, environmental.ai, which uh, takes into consideration uh, 100% resolution and uh, considers local sources and gives real time data. And so we have tried to superimpose the uh, present cases of uh, COVID-19 uh, in a particular city or a particular region and generate these hotspots which can be helpful for stakeholders to uh, take further actions upon. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we have answered most of the questions and if in case uh, some of them are left out, I'll make sure that we send you across. Uh, if you have some feedback or questions for our today's session, please don't hesitate. Uh, please do write uh, to us. You can drop in an email to me at ayan at the red uh, it's there in the webinar uh, invite as well, uh, which you have got after the registration. So uh, please feel free to share whatever you have felt about this uh, webinar and uh, help us uh, grow more towards this. So this was our third webinar in this series. And I'm thankful to our panelists, uh, Mr. Jainam Mehta, uh, Dr. Srikant Sola, uh, and uh, Mr. Radha Narayan, who have given such wonderful insights today, be it the, the, the measuring the parameters like particulate matters or how we are trying to mitigate it uh, as uh, very nicely presented by my uh, fellow mates from uh, Devikert. So thank you all. Thank you all the participants who have spent time to uh, attend this webinar. Stay safe, stay happy. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.